Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here with the one and only Isabel Lee, or Leah, actually, is that right? No, you got it right the Leah, first time. I always second yeah. guess myself because I saw the <laughs> A and the N and I was like, what is it doing there? But it's all good. Uh, just a little type action there, and uh, good to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, how are you feeling? Good. We had a little bit of Drake this morning to we get have, ready. Yeah, <laughs> we, just, we were just rocking out a little bit, playing a little, some, a little bit of rap, a little, little dance music, and we're ready to get this or continue this party. A special thanks to Alana and, of course, uh, uh, Christine as well, kicking off the party today, and we're going to continue it all day long with you, Anna and Ash and Lee Designer and Richard and Olivier, is that how, Bertrand? Is that's that how you would say that? Olivier, I think so. Olivier, very cool. So I'll just kind of click through the schedule real fast, just so you know what is going on, and that's all this week on Adobe Live. Today and tomorrow, we're actually in day two. Again, Alana did some amazing illustrations in Illustrator. It's cool seeing her work. Uh, we're gonna continue what we did, started yesterday with Isabel. Emmy Brower as well will be up later on, along with Lauren, Lauren Dickens, who was actually kind of working in Illustrator, dealing with some type, doing kind of like a logo lockup. So it's super fun just having graphic designers tackle this. And you have a chance to tackle your own graphic design with the daily challenge. So yesterday was a keynote invitation, basically an invite to Max. And guess what? You got you got accepted. You're going to Max. Today you design a ticket so we get to review those, which will be yes. nice. You, you, you got your ticket now. <laughs> design it. We'll show it off. Day three, portfolio reviews. Roll that into your portfolio. But we want to highlight you because uh, we have a lot of super sharp people in chat. And also next to me, this one. <laughs> Exciting. So, yeah. yeah. How, how are you feeling, by the way? Good. You flew in, ye uh, yes? Day before yesterday. Day before yesterday. Are you, yeah. and, and maybe you're over the jet lag, who knows? A little bit. There's a, a little, little bit. bit. Much better than she yesterday. She might get a little delirious after a while. That's and cool. that'll just make it more fun. So that's okay. That's what coffee's for. Exactly. Oh, yeah. We got it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, what's the, uh, and actually, if you could kind of, I don't know, kind of recap what you did yeah. yesterday. Yeah, so I was here yesterday as well. I'm also going to be here tomorrow. Um, not with Paul, sadly, but. Oh. You know. Did I <laughs> did I do something wrong already? <laughs> it's only day two. No, it's very good. But yeah, so over the course of three days, I am making a zine about the typography that I found in Italy. So yesterday we talked through how you take images while you're out and about and then how you make mood boards from these to kind of design your publication. So we looked at some lettering references and collected these and talked about style and we're going to be using those to make part of a display typeface today. Um, we also looked at color and style references that we're going to use in the publication that we make tomorrow. I could just see people like staring at you again like we were talking yesterday. <laughs> people like, why are you taking a photo of that uh, <laughs> top of that doorway? They probably look at you like you're crazy. Can it's we talk great. About it? It's yeah. great because everyone thinks you're a tourist anyway and then you go and take pictures of the things like the street lamp and they're like, well, why would you do that? And but and but that's what, that's what makes this really interesting. It's like stuff that you wouldn't normally take a photograph of. It's like, okay, I get it. I've seen the Colosseum, beautiful. Mm. This is like, you know, capturing the essence of Italy is kind of what you're trying to do Well, here, also, everybody has photos of the Colosseum, and you can find yeah. beautiful pictures of the Colosseum on the internet, so why not take pictures yeah. of the stuff that... Even, yeah, even when I, yeah, if I would go to Italy, I'm just like, I'm just going to grab this one on, 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 <laughs> online. Online, like, just for, I wouldn't do that, though. Or would I? Oh. No, I wouldn't do it. But yeah, so we, we were just kind of looking at how you can collect some of these photos and we're going to talk about how you use them to inform an editorial publication. Um, we digitized some type. We took some of the type images that um, we'd looked at and then we used a grid in Illustrator to show you how you can start playing with those. Um, we made uh, a couple of letters of this one. In honor of Ron P. <laughs> Ron P. was not Ron a real P., person. Ron P., if you were out there, <laughs> we, we have your logo, your type lockup. We have your name and logo form ready to go. Yeah, so if you're called Ron, you can, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we could use your help today, by the way. We'll talk about that later, sort yeah. of uh, helping us name things. We also went through Adobe Capture, and we've imported some of these color schemes um, from these images, and we were looking at how you can use these from real photos and design your color schemes for your publication. Yeah, so. that looks good, and all using Adobe Capture. Keep in mind that you can go to the Replays tab, 
check out what uh, what you did yesterday. Scrub through that, you know, and all that good stuff. But stick around, hang out with us right now, and catch it live as we welcome Munir and Yadira and Richard and Dee. It's good to have you here, my friends. Uh, Robert as well. That R looks, looks good. We got a lot of conversation yeah. about this R. This R is no. Great. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's like it, even and even interesting parts of this. Even the lavaggio. Yeah. The G, the G's. You know. I think that's why it's really cool because when you look at actually hand drawn or hand painted typography, you get all these quirks that you don't get in a font, and that's why it's really fun to try and digitize some of this yeah. stuff. And there's the. Ran the the S is kind of unique. It almost reminds me more like of a Z, but yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Super cool. Uh, Roxanne's excited to see this progress. Roxanne, where are you from? Let us know. Uh, if anybody is joining us from Italy, would love to hear if you could be like, it'd be wild if they're like, oh yeah, that place is right up the street from me. Yeah, that, that would be, be kind of funny. That'd be, that'd be crazy. Or if anybody can tell me what some of these signs mean, because <laughs> I'm not sure what some of them yeah, mean. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> so far, you've determined that that's oil. oil. I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> that's olive oil of yeah, some kind. Yeah, it's like olive oil. Oh, Quebec City. Ah, oh, Roxanne, I love Quebec City. Canada, the most European city in the Americas. Oh, really? Aside from, I would say, um, uh, what is in Argentina, Buenos Aires. Oh, okay. Like it is like it is pure. It's French uh, Canada for sure. That's awesome. So, anyways, regardless where you're from, we're happy to have you here. Even our live audience. Hey, live audience. Just keep it down. We're <laughs> we're live. Shh, don't. It's, a whole, it's all the hype. All these people out there. So, <laughs> anyways, continue. <laughs> But yeah, so today we're kind of going to look at some of these things we started yesterday. We talked about how you can draw your letters in Illustrator, but it's not always the best way to actually design your font. But I know that it's kind of scary trying to design a font if you've never done it before and mm -hmm. you're used to Illustrator because there's all these programs out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the kind of tools and the quick ways that I found if you want to make a display font. Obviously, this isn't a substitute for going and doing your master's degree in typography if you're yeah. super into it. But as a graphic designer, sometimes it's fun to make these experimental typefaces with weird R's and stuff in them. Yeah, so. and I, I feel like it could be one of those one of those things that you you could study type like forever, right? Yeah. So there are the masters of type, but there's like so much to learn. And I like how you're just just diving right in, you know, and just trying this out live, which is super fun. I think the see. best way to do to learn is to just have a go. Um, yeah. Just have a go. Exactly. Ooh, that's a very that's a very British term, by the Is way. It? Have, have a, a go. go. We we're thinking about playing a drink, <laughs> a coffee drinking game. Coffee drinking game. But we know you have friends at the pub, so we're thinking about British phrases. If you say a British yeah. phrase, then we all have to drink from our coffee. Yeah. Well, I don't have any coffee. Oh we've shoot! I drank it all already because oh, of the you? jet lag. <laughs> oh shoot! But you I'm can sorry. drink coffee for me. You'll be bouncing off the walls. I usually do anyway. <laughs> but yeah. So. It's pretty cool. And Ta just, sorry. It's okay. I was just going to say the time difference kind of works in this case. Yeah, it totally <laughs> does. So we're going to take, if you say something British, we have to drink. Okay. Uh, also, another fun thing that we're going to have, we're just going to have a random giveaway. We're going to have chat and win in about uh, tw uh, 20 minutes just for fun. And let's keep in mind the challenge that's happening in the challenge tab. So. That's a sticky wicket. That's an interesting. Thank you, Richard, for that That's a phrase. sticky wicket. No idea. Is that from Harry Potter? I don't no, know. No, not so everything's good. from Harry Potter. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I thought your whole culture came from Harry Potter. No, I'm I just mean, kidding. I mean, there is a lot of it in there. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. Okay, yeah. So yeah, if you hear me say anything that's uh, super British, then you can get Paul to drink his coffee and we'll see how much <laughs> exactly. coffee he drinks by the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's a deal. So again, uh, click out the, the About page that you can check out your work. Oh we yeah, can, and you, you can know, you can follow me on Behance as well if you want to see some of the other stuff that I'm up to. Like I do a lot of work with type that's not just making typefaces. Um, I'm doing some experiments with variable fonts. I also make products. So, oh, I love it. Yeah. And you're throwing out these little terms that I th we'll, we'll talk about as well. Definitely. Like variable fonts, you said display fonts. Mm -hmm. Like some of those terms people might not be aware of. And uh, Yeah, so today we're making a display font, which basically just means that the font is going to be used big in the context of an editorial publication. It's a lot safer to make a display font because you know, you don't have to make it super legible for small body copy that you're trying to read really small. It, and mm -hmm. it can be a lot more playful because it's only going to be shown big and it's designed to be fun. So if you're going to design your first typeface, make it a display font. 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, if you're curious about all those various terms and stuff, I usually tell people to like jump out to uh, Typekit because yeah. you're able to see the, uh, you know, to browse fonts. And I'm gonna try to. Perfect. So right over here, since you mentioned that, by the way, right over here, display or headings. Yes. That's what you call it on yep. Typekit. So it's legible fonts and then almost like super fun fonts that just like, there are no rules. Like this would never be a, like body copy. But it's gorgeous. Exactly. What? And there's nothing wrong with uh. making display fonts. I think a lot of the time people think, oh, if you're going to do typography, then you need to be an expert on absolutely everything. But it's OK to just get stuck in. Yeah. This is beautiful. Like, I'm seriously going to uh, sync this, that's for sure. But also, if you're going to make a display font and you're not really sure where to start, um, one of the tools that I find really fun is something called Prototypo. Um, somebody in uh, Type Foundry put me onto this. But basically, what it allows you to do is there are all these sort of template fonts. And all of these have been licensed so that anything you make with this, you can use for commercial use, which is really, really cool. Yes. And you can basically edit them, and it'll help set all your proportions right. Because yesterday, we looked at the kind of things that you need to consider when you're designing a typeface. So things like the ascender height, the cap height, the x height, the baseline, the descender. For anyone not familiar with these terms, like descender is like where your kind of lowercase g would hang at the bottom. Your baseline is where all the letters sit. The x height is where, for example, um, when you've got a lowercase letters, where the bowls and stuff sit, so like the bottom of the A. And then your cap height is where your capitals are. So today we're just making a, like a display font, so we're just making capitals. So we don't need to worry too much about the other stuff. But even when you're designing a font, it's worth thinking about these things. Yeah. So what this tool is really good at is I can take, for example, this template, and I can go, OK, I want to make a new font. And then I'm going to call it Ron P, because that's what we were looking at yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then I can go, OK, I want to start designing. And then I can go, OK, so looking at my, my Illustrator file that I started drawing yesterday, I can see, OK, so these are the kind of characteristics I'm working with. So the x height is quite small. And then the font will squish for you. Now, this doesn't make a perfect typeface, but it's mm -hmm. a really good way of just looking at how letters relate to each other, particularly if you're not sure of all your yeah. proportions. Um, I find this a really good way to start. And the beauty of this is you can export it to an actual font file at the end. Okay. So you can then edit that in Glyph. So if, you, if you're not really that confident, then you can design this and then edit things, but you know you've got your basic structure in place. Uh -huh. so you can do things like control the thickness. And it's also a good way just to kind of understand the principles, things like contrast that change how a font looks and how this works in real time. And anybody who knows anything about variable fonts, so that's fonts where you can kind of change the width and stuff. Huge. This is very good for like experimenting with how you can make fonts change. Yeah, because that's kind of what's happening here is variable fonts, you think you're making it more bold when with this font in Illustrator, but it's actually cycling through the different bold w weights. Exactly. If you will. And you kind of, where you position to your nodes, the points where you're drawing on your letters, that controls how these things expand and contract. So I'm loving this. This is really fun. And I found it was a great way of just making templates. And it allows you to do things like pick alternates. So if you're not sure what kind of A you want in your font, you can try one of them out. Oh, I love it. Um, and it's just really worth knowing about if you're starting out. And it also, it'll do this thing where it turns things red if you're not really supposed to be making your font like that. It'll tell you what the guidelines are. Mm -hmm. And so when you've made a, your quick font, you can also you can edit in the program if you like, um, or in my case, I tend to download it and edit things in glyphs. But I just mm. wanted to go through that with you guys because it's a really good tool to get started with. It totally is. Yeah, I like it. it, it it's a good like primer for for font, uh, you know, for font or type creation. Is this a free website? Um, so yeah, Anna, that's a good question. It, it is subscription based, but it's not very expensive. Um, and there's a you can get a free trial for 30 days, which is what I did first to have a play with it. But the beauty of it is that everything you make, you have the commercial rights to. So if you're designing a font for a brand, mm -hmm. you can use that and you can use the skeleton and you don't have any problems with licensing or anything like that because you're free to use however you change the templates. 
That's cool. Yeah. Because that is cool. huge. That's actually a huge issue, like I think, in terms of taking uh, someone else's font. It's just like taking someone's el someone else's artwork yeah. and modifying it. And then like redistributing it, that's kind of like an issue. Like if you, some you know, again, you took somebody's photograph and changed it a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because you don't want to copy everybody else's font. And this is why it's sometimes good to take like type you see that's been sign painted and finish the rest of the alphabet yourself like we're going to do today. Mm -hmm. um, because it just gives you a way of learning without actually copying off people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The most important thing, we just want you to have fun, right? <laughs> do you, I got a question for you. Do you think there will be a day when we'll be like, hey, we've made all the fonts, we're good? <laughs> I think it's tricky. I think we have a lot of fonts already, but I think the beauty of it is there's just so much stuff you can do with it. And I think there's some classic fonts that will never die. So, you know, things like Futura and mm -hmm. Helvetica are really good models to just look at when you're starting out. But everyone always wants to interpret things differently and put their own spin on it. So Yeah, totally. And I think most people have like a thousand fonts on their machine, but they use like well, that's five. It. <laughs> you have your th three. I'm always using like Helvetica New, and actually Acumen is a new one because it's a variable font. So that's I true. have all this flexibility with those types. There's also some really fun things you can do with uh, variable fonts. Getting slightly sidetracked. So I'm working on something at the moment, and this kind of shows you. Um, so I made a font which dances to Snoop Dogg. So when you can control all the variables on your font, it means it can respond. So we've designed one that responds in real time, and whenever there's music, I don't know if we can pulses. have that music. That's fine because you can just see it anyway. But the, okay, good, you can good. get it to pulse uh. in response to music, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot of new technology and stuff that's happening with fonts at the moment, which is really fun. Um, you can do things where you can connect fonts and all their different axes, so all the points on the font, to controls, which it means that you can do things like push it on sliders and the font will change. And so wow. even if we have all the design typefaces in the world, there's always this kind of new technology that makes these sort of fun things uh -huh. happen. And I think there's a lot of potential for like installations and things. We tested a a font where you can clap and then the, the laptop can hear you um, and then it will respond. So hmm. That's fun. So like you don't even need sound for these experiments, but the idea is whatever whatever you put in front of it, you can you can respond. We also did a little bit with um, with a webcam where uh, the computer accesses the webcam and then you can control it and the font changes depending on the light levels. Wow. That's so, really cool. Yeah. Who did you work with on this? You have some like a somebody that likes heart is into hardware, right? Uh, um, yeah. So I I have a design studio. I have a business partner, and we also work with a software developer who helps us code some of these experiments. Yeah, that is really cool. I mean, this is next level. We know our screens can like dim for nighttime. Maybe they can invert the colors. But I love the idea of making a thin font to make it even maybe even easier on your eyes so they're not slapping you in the face at night. Yeah. Well, it's kind of cool. I've seen some really interesting experiments with augmented reality where you can they, they kind of project the signs and it changes depending on the angle you're looking at it. And so I think there's all wow. sorts of fun things you can do with typefaces that we haven't done yet. Yeah, you're, that's so true. Barris just asked me what my opinion on Comic Sans is. I just love it. Okay, so I, I have... I love that yeah. you love it, by the way, Barris. I think a lot of designers love to hate it, but actually, it's really good for the purpose it was designed for. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's an easy one to pick on, yeah. but I like that you like it, because it just, he's like, what is it, a contrarian? Is that what you'd refer to that as? Like, somebody who doesn't really go along with everybody else. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great font. Like, it was designed to be friendly and be easy to read, and I know it's really good for dyslexic children to read, so... Mm -hmm. Why would why would you be mean to it? You know, it, it's people don't always use it for the right reasons, but that's about designers knowing when to use font yeah, choices. Yeah, the, the reason it's not liked is because it was so popular. Like it got, it got basically got bundled up with um, Microsoft product mm. showing off like a comic. I think it was like a how to something they were trying. They needed a playful font to install, yeah. and then it ended up in Microsoft Word, and everybody used it. But yeah, yeah and I, I think yeah, a lot of designers are taught to hate it. That's true, and then I think a lot of people don't really know why they hate it, and I think it's always important to sit back and look at... There's a book called Just My Type, which is quite useful if anyone wants to read kind of the stories about typefaces and where they come from and 
why yeah. they're used in certain ways, and I found it's that totally, really helpful. It's totally <laughs> nerdy. It is nerdy. It's, it's not that bad. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like Helvetica the movie, for instance. Exactly. But yeah. we get to... I'll let you work. I have so many... <laughs> So many questions. So, so many, many questions. <laughs> so many thoughts running through my head. Thanks, caffeine. <laughs> but yeah, so I think if you're if you're struggling with how to digitize your type, you can use something like Prototypo. Um, I prefer to draw directly in glyphs. Um, so this is kind of industry standard to use glyphs. I have something called Glyphs Mini, which is a cheaper version of it, which has not all the functionality. But when you're just making a display font, then it's okay. No, oh, nice. So what I tend to do is um, I tend to draw these um, these letters out. So last night I went home and I started working on some of these letters that we were looking at yesterday. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of best practices for when you're trying to make your typeface. Like I've learned a lot of this along the way. Um, I think somebody earlier asked in the chat if I done any kind of typography. I did a little bit at university, but not very much. So most of it was self-taught. Um, but I think that's kind of a good way to learn, actually. Yeah. No, that is good. And the book, again, was called Just My Type? Yes. Is that right? Uh, I'm trying to remember who the author is. Yeah. Simon, yeah. Simon Garfield, I think. Yeah, let us know. It looks like some people do like, like that book. Yadira says it's a wonderful book. And yeah, it is. It is a. It is a really good book. Um, just to kind of learn about the context of typography. Do you remember the names of what's the inside of a letter called? I can't. I don't know. What's it called? The inside. <laughs> uh, counter, I think. The counter. I'm not very good with my terminology, so feel free no. to correct me. <laughs> yeah. No. Simon Garfield, Tim, for the win. Thank you so much. There we go. Okay. Thinking with type. Yeah, that's another Thinking good one. Thinking with type. Do you have to worry about inkwells for display type or is that more of a reader typeface thing? Question from Robert. So it really depends what you're gonna use it for. Um, and usually inkwells are more of a problem with small type. So for this one, I'm not worrying about it so much. What's inkwells? Um, basically where you have to adjust part of the font and you kind of make a little nook in it for when you print because sometimes ink spreads on the page. Ah. Oh. So when you're doing really, really small fonts, um, sometimes it bleeds a little bit onto the paper and can look oh. smudgy and difficult to read. But yeah, with oh. this font, that's not too much of a problem because we're using it big. And can you recap the name of this app? Uh, yes, it's called Prototypo. That was that um, was the one earlier, and the one you're yes. in now is Glyphs? Yes, so um, Prototypo, uh, the website, if you want it, is prototypo.io. Um, yeah, I, I post, pasted the link in there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one's really good if you're just getting started. And yeah, now I'm in Glyphs. And like I said, I use Glyphs Mini, which is a kind of abbreviated version of it. Um, anybody who's used Glyphs, it's kind of quite intimidating. But the key thing about display typefaces is you only have to do the uppercase set. And then I've started doing some punctuation and some numbers as well. And that's often a really kind of easy way to get started. And you can deal with some of the other stuff later. Um, so when we were looking yesterday, we really liked this R, so I decided that would be quite a good starting point. Um, so I'll just show you guys um, some of the things that, that you should be doing when you're drawing your letters. Now the reason that we use glyphs rather than illustrator, there are a couple of reasons why. Um, it's actually, I find it harder to draw in glyphs than I do illustrator, which is why I do these digital sketches first. But when you're actually designing a font, you often need to think about things like stroke direction, because basically when it's com when it's in a computer program, it needs to know which bits are going to be dark, so like the actual shape of this R here, and which bits are going to be uh, not filled for when you're actually typing in it. So it's more kind of programming it for a computer. Hmm. Um, and one of the things that Glyphs does for you is you should always have your outside stroke going counterclockwise and your inside stroke going clockwise. But you can actually just draw things in as you like. And then Glyphs has a tool where you can take your letters and then you can correct the path direction. So you don't need to worry about it oh, right okay. at the beginning. You can just draw as you draw in Illustrator and then it will correct it for you, which is something which is really helpful. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's probably something you worry about like when you're finishing it up. Exactly. The directions. So when you're starting your font, you can either, the beautiful thing about Prototypo is you can download your fonts as an OTF, so like a font file, and then you can open it in Glyphs. So if you're not really sure, you can have this template kind of ready-made that you just, you just push around. Um, and I think the other option, you can also paste things in. So you can put your letters in from Illustrator and then draw over them if you want to, if you're not really sure. Um, yeah, I like that. I know Adobe have FontSelf, which I've well, never used as and another it's not, option. Uh, it's, not a, it's, not, it's just an extension to Illustrator. It's yeah. not ours. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be kind of showing that off which is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So the, basically, there are lots of options to kind of get started. Um, cool. Yeah, everyone's oh, getting sweet. really involved. I'm, I'm really glad everyone else is sharing all their uh, recommendations and stuff. That's really helpful. We have counters, then, uh, yeah, which yeah. is the inside. Then they also mentioned the bowl, the white being the white space inside of the bowl. I'm glad there's not going to be a test. Yeah, can you imagine? But like that's some of the things that's most uh, really it, kind of inter is, intimidating is all the vocabulary. And yeah, but it's good to know because it's going to totally make you sound smart in meetings. Oh yeah. Ugh, I noticed your your bowl here. <laughs> is that bowl? Also, your once, counter. <laughs> once you know really good typography terminology, there are lots of kind of like jokes and stuff that you can make. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, are we talking pi type puns? You can make a lot of type puns. Oh no, I love puns. <laughs> Makes my day. Yeah, puns oh, are great. it's odd. <laughs> so if you have any good type puns, then then do share them because I actually really like them. Um, yeah, a f I mean a few other tips for if you're getting started in in glyphs. Um, if you're just doing a display typeface, then you can just start with the the regular weight. So I've just clicked the font info tab here, so you can just see how my file is set up. Um, so I'm just designing a regular weight, and I've kind of put these these increments in are based on the things I was drawing in Illustrator. Um, so you can change this. If you're not really sure about where to set these things, um, there are some good resources on the internet where you can look at existing fonts and look at how low their descenders are and where their X height and cap height are. And that's kind of a helpful way to start. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking about doing lots of different typefaces, it's a really good idea to design the bold weight and the light weight because then your regular weight will be somewhere in the middle. And that's something I didn't know for a long time. I thought, oh, you design your regular weight and then you design your bold and then you design your light. But actually, it can be easier to design the two extremes. Mm -hmm. And then you can make everything in between. So then you can have one of those fonts that has all the different mm -hmm. weights to it. Slow clap for Robert. Bad kerning can never be justified. <laughs> there we go. That one's good. <laughs> We'll do lots of slow claps. <laughs> <laughs> Take Kern, notes, everyone. Kern, you dig it. There will be a multiple choice quiz after the stream is over. Are you going to set that up, <laughs> Tim? We'd like to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, a few other things, tips for getting started in glyphs. So once you've set all that up and you've started drawing your font, if you've never used it before, actually drawing is it's it's very similar, like you still do Bezier curves exactly the same as you would in Illustrator and you still bend things in the same way, you've still got handles that you can move. So actually the learning curve is not too steep from Illustrator. Um, it's good to just have a go and then just have a go, have a play and Drink. then it's, it's okay. Glyphs has a lot of resources on how to integrate it with Illustrator and things anyway if you're starting out. Speaking of have a go, I think it's time. Ooh, to have a go. You guessed it. At Chat and Win. Let's dive in right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. And Roxanne knows what she's doing. Chat, chat, Paul does, chat and win. Say something in chat, that's how you enter to win. And for chat and win today, what we have is Moo. I'm looking at Adobe Live over there. It's Moo, perfect, $30, just wanna double check. 
because we do mix it up, by the way, which is super fun. So $30 Moo gift card for whoever we pick at random. Just say something in chat so we know somebody's at the other end of that keyboard. So. Oh, look at this. Moo. Go. Hello, y'all. Hello. <laughs> we'll take type puns. Yeah, write us some type puns. <laughs> Badoni. Oh, we're getting font names now. Yeah, just write oh, as your bold favorite over. font. Oh, <laughs> bold over. Bold that's, over. That, that counts as like kind of like a pun because of the bowl. It's true. So that's true. good. Adobe Live will pick a name here shortly. We just want to thank you all for joining us. Just our way to say that we appreciate you, quite frankly. You're just my type. So. Kern it like it's hot, okay? Kern it like it's hot. <laughs> You know who's just our type is Joe right here. Joe Yamakawa. Congratulations, Joe Yamakawa. You are the proud winner of a $30 gift card to Moo. Allows you to print up pretty much anything. Make that invite. Really make anything. I like the idea of really positive cards. They have like print finity as well, don't they? So you can print different designs. You can make cards with different designs all on the front, which is Oh, really don't cool. tell me that. Mm. Thanks for I just lost sleep <laughs> over that because now I'm going to want to do that all night. You can, make, right? you can make as many designs as you I want to do so many random things. <laughs> and Joe gets to. You get to make as many random cards as you want. We appreciate you, Joe. Uh, yes. So we'll, yeah. we'll get back, in, back into Put this. Put tight puns on them. But yeah, back to our super exciting font. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions on glyphs or terms, I can try and answer them. I'm no expert. I'm literally a graphic designer who started using type, but yeah, I know that's where yeah. a lot of people are. And so I was like, let's share how you actually make that transition. Um, you just do your thing yeah. and we will watch you. Mm -hmm. The other things to think about when you're drawing your letters, it's the same. Anybody who's got experience with Bezier curves in Illustrator probably already knows this, um, but you want to try and make sure that your handles are parallel to each other. And if your fonts are looking a bit wonky and things aren't really lining up, it's often because your handles are a little bit off. So the minute I start moving my O and my handles are at the wrong angles to each other, everything just goes terrible. And when people start to draw things, often they have loads and loads of points. So they draw an O and they do it with as many little, little points as possible. And actually it's better to have much fewer points um, so, for example, on an O, you really only want to have four points on the outside and four points on the inside. Yeah, and the simpler the better. Just yeah. those are beautiful curves. And so that. this is why sometimes it's it's easier to start drawing things in with the pen tool in Illustrator first because you can get a feel for how the shapes actually look. Mm -hmm. So we were talking a little bit yesterday about how do you make a font and how do you make it not the same as the lettering that you're copying. So. Often I will start doing these drawings in Illustrator and then when I take them into Glyphs, I change them a little bit. So when I was looking at the reference images that we uh, that we that I, we collected, um, I actually I'll have a look in my mood board. I really liked this olive oil one, but we also had a bunch more uh, references. So for example, I really liked the O here that it was kind of squared off. So I designed something mm -hmm. that was a little bit more like that. Um, and often what you're trying to do in a project like this is I'm trying to find characteristics that kind of are similar. So things that we see a lot in, in this case in Italy that you might not see other places. And I found that a lot of the sign painted or the hand drawn letters were very kind of geometric and but they were often quite soft and squared off. So you can see it here. Um, and we were talking about this one earlier with these really kind of like squared curly G's, mm -hmm. um, which is quite nice. So the way you get around copying is you look at lots of references. So I looked a lot of these and then I started drawing this font. So that's why often it's good to digitize a few things before you start drawing your actual letters. Mm -hmm. So we can see here, um, I looked a little bit at the G that was in uh, in that reference we saw, but I decided it was a little bit too a little bit too close because there's not much white space there and it's a little bit, you can tell somebody's painted it by hand. So I made some of these kind of corrections that you would want if it was a font and I put this kind of a little bit more space in it. And so a lot of kind of type design is just playing with things as you go along. Um, the other thing to think about is type is about how all the letters work together. It's not about one letter. So when we were drawing our R, 
we really liked this sort of curvy thing, but if we do the R like this, then we should also think about how the P is gonna look. Mm -hmm. So then when I was drawing the P, um, I tried to say, take the same kind of characteristic, which means that then you also have the B. So the B is also has similar strokes to it. So then you end up with these letters that all have this little flourish to it. And like these aren't perfect and the flourish often isn't exactly the same in each of them because the needs of the letter are slightly different. Mm -hmm. But it means that you can take this inspiration from one little letter here and apply it to a whole alphabet because we didn't have those letters in this sign. Yeah. So it was a really good way of kind of making your own alphabet and taking something and making it yourself from some bits of inspiration that you found. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and again, you didn't even capture that whole sign, so that's cool. Welcome, welcome, Barris. Good to have you here. Uh, you'll see. I'll show you where to upload that ticket. Welcome, Jasmine. Good to have you here as well. And uh, to upload your design, just go to the challenge tab. Basically, you'll find that right over there, and that's why we have that challenge submission dialog. But again, right over there. Exciting. That's where you could see it. Ta -da. Make your own invite, print it up through Moo, go to Adobe Max, and see if it gets you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be a prize in itself if you can get in with your yeah, fake invite. Because it's going to look so nice. Yeah. There's no way it wouldn't be real. It's just so gorgeous. I'm not saying to do that. No, but. But try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, once you've kind of got your capitals. It's just a case of kind of playing with everything and seeing how things work together. One of the great things that I that you, about glyphs is that you can kind of just, like I was just doing, you can test some of the letters together and see how it's all looking. So we can even, we had the phrase on the reference that said Olio, and then we can type it out here and then have a look at how it looks compared to one of the references. I think I've actually got the full image of this one. Yeah, so you can have a look at how it compares to the kind of letters that you're looking at, or we can type, for example, Francesco with the letters that I've been doing so far. And here we can see how it looks in relation to the R that we were doing earlier. Yeah, so Ashton, good point. There's also font self. Yes. Um, I can. I can show that. You can t you do your thing. You do I'm I'm here to help. Yeah. I could also show that. Yeah, font self is super interesting. Let's have a look at this because yeah. this is another way that you can do your fonts straight from Illustrator if you're not ready to draw in glyphs just yet. Yeah. And this is super fun. Like I, I liked the idea of making multicolor fonts, which are supported, so you can see uh, font self. This happens to be font self maker 2.2. It does accept color fonts. The reason there's a little warning there is it says, hey, you know what? Illustrator supports it, but not even your operating system will support it. So there is that, but have fun making fonts. So typically you'd make a font, drag it in here. I haven't done this in a bit, and it will import it just like you see here. So let's just click on this T, you know, and then you can start to like adjust it as well and adjust the kerning, if you will. So this is where I'd tighten it up and then you end up with an actual font. So from here, just export as my cool font. Apparently that's what I called it. My was, cool font. <laughs> yeah, real creative, huh? Yeah. My cool font. Um, it also works for Photoshop, so you can see all these, all these characters. Uh, let me actually type that up now, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. This reminds me of the Nintendo 64 logo. Yeah. Oh, you know what I did? This was a super easy. I was trying to find this source file, basically. Right. But these, uh, I just, I took a, a very angular font, extruded it, did a 3D extrude, and put it on an isometric view. And I was able to do that with the whole character set, like, super fast. Um, and then with that done, I'll just type in, uh, the, you know, max. You get the idea, zoop, and then color fonts are in here. Oh, here's one. 
There's one version, but you can see this is one I solved. AA font. <laughs> AA font. You know I just wanted it to appear at the top. Yeah, my font's uh, always named like that. Ooh, this abalone or abalone. Like, we had a couple designers make these mm -hmm. multicolor fonts that are gorgeous. They're so gorgeous. Look at this. So first off, like you're saying, because you're doing uh, all the caps version, this is, they did all the lowercase. Look at this. Look at it. Look at how gorgeous this is. I'm sorry I don't know who made this one, but uh, no doubt it's really amazing, as you can see. Right. Nice. So anyway, and all you do, let's break this up, ungroup it. Like, you could actually see that they just did, they used the blend tool and took that A and brought it into um, Font Self Maker. And I think Ooh. often it's really cool because then I think often when you know the rules of typography, it can be really hard to just experiment and have fun. So I think sometimes it's easier when you have a design background and no typography knowledge because you can just be a lot more playful. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good point. Because you don't know the rules. So I think sometimes... Ashton, do I know you? Ashton, do you work for Font Self? <laughs> <laughs> Promoting it I do have to here. ask and I feel bad because I don't know. Tell me. Anyways. Oh, we've got dad jokes coming dad, in now. Dad Dobie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, switching back to you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so like there's lots of ways if you want to kind of try stuff out. Um, and when you're kind of drawing your, your font out, there's a lot of kind of going back and forth. Like we talked about this, this really weird S um, that we were trying to trying to make. And I mean, in type rules, you'd probably never draw an S like that. It's a really kind of like swirly way of doing it. Um, but actually, when you when you start digitizing it, 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 it's quite fun, but it's also quite challenging. And for, for this font also, um, I wanted to round all the corners because when you look at the reference like this, it's been sign painted. So I didn't want it to feel too harsh and like an actual font. And Glyphs has a really cool tool for that, where once you've got the structure of your letters, you can highlight all the ones you're working on, and then you can go on to filter, and then you can say round corners. And mm. mine's got a radius of 15. And then what it will do is kind of like how an illustrator, when you're, you kind of pull all the rounded corners tool, you can do the same sort of thing here on the end. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of really transferable skills, um, which is why I kind of find it useful to hop between both. Very cool. And yeah, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm trying to finish these kind of numbers. So when you're when you've got like only a few reference letters, it's sometimes hard to work out how to design your numbers. And often you draw things out and they don't look quite right and you've got to fix it. But mm -hmm. it's actually really easy. Once you've drawn your outlines, I might decide actually I, I don't like this angle here. And you can literally just drag and then you can control the Bezier curves the same way you would an illustrator. And so Yeah. Which is yeah, super nice. It's that super all makes nice. just like a lot of, a lot of sense coming from Illustrator. It makes it super easy. Um, I do agree with you. Uh, first of all, Munir, that this abalone might be Maria Gr Grunland's font that she made for Adobe, by the way. So that's the one that I might have showed. Just give her a shout out. She's like a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and then Jennifer Meadows probably has a pet peeve that you also have. Yeah, people when, using foot and inch marks. Yeah. I mean, also <laughs> I've discovered like I, I've i worked doing typography in the UK and in like Denmark. And I found that often the standards are different between places. So for example, in British typography, we always like to use the curved marks, but actually I've discovered in mainland Europe, as far as I've seen, they often kind of use the feet and inches marks or mm. even things like hyphenation. Um, in when I'm setting English type for a British market, I try and avoid hyphenation wherever possible. But in German or Danish, because the words are so long, it was completely acceptable to have hyphenation in your paragraphs. So I think often the rules aren't as hard and fast mm. as everybody thinks. And yeah. it's important to consider other languages when you're making your typography. That's a good point. Good point. Particularly, I haven't done it like it's I think it's okay for Italian somebody might correct me if I'm wrong but if I was designing for a Scandinavian alphabet I'd also need to make sure that I have some of these um, special capitals which they need to spell some of their words mm -hmm. and I think Italian's okay but that's always something to consider when you're designing mm -hmm. your font what languages it's going to be used in 
So Ashton, there isn't. Actually, let me double check. Sure. Anyways, people are just doing the challenge. Nice. Somebody had theirs in. Somebody said they just they posted theirs. Uh, you do you could do that through the challenge tab. Um, so you could just learn more about Max through that challenge tab. But there's no assets. You could use Nicolas Cage, like Barris is doing. Do it. Make a meme. You know, make a meme. Why not? I'd enjoy that. You could use a picture of Isabel here. Yeah, use a picture of me right? if you like. Actually, don't Scrub do it. Scrub back through the time <laughs> through this don't. video. Take a picture. You, re you ready? No, please don't. Oh, no, you don't want to? Okay, never mind. Don't thinking, do that just, to me. Come we on. We could do like this. Oh, no. <laughs> pop on all the invites. You just like it because somebody made an invite yesterday with you on it. And no, it's one I'm, of just, your I'm just a total ham is what it is. <laughs> it's like, no. What does a total ham mean? That's really American. Ooh, a ham. It's what my. It you're just... Just goofy. You're just okay. a total goofball. Like a big kid? Yeah, just a big kid. I tried root beer for the first time yesterday. I thought it was a real beer, and somebody told me it's not. It's actually a kid's drink. Oh, and you're totally getting hammered off of it. Like, oh, this is really going to my head. <laughs> I didn't like it. It tasted weird. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it is right. kind of like a... Uh, it is, it's not a real beer. No. I was really disappointed to find that out. But it's kind of not a great name for a beer. Root, root beer. Root beer. Oh, you know what would be good? Root, a root drink. A root drink. <laughs> you know? I don't think that, that's... Give me a root. That's it's not like that good a name. Juice. Let's have beet juice. Anyways. But yeah. Look at you typing away. I know. Once You're you... fancy. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Fancy, is that because I'm English? <laughs> <laughs> it's your accent. You can do anything. No, it's just like, uh, it was Vector a second ago, and now yeah. you're already typing. That's the really great thing is you can kind of test things out. So use somebody's name in there. Use like uh, Aaron. Bur no, I'm gonna use Aaron Bernstein because I know okay. Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Aaron. He says I love root Ooh, beer. Beautiful. Aaron. And if I spell his name wrong, he won't forgive me. Aaron Root Bernstein. Yeah. Aaron Apparently, root I can't Bernstein. have it all on one line. Apparently, we're not allowed to do that. There we go. Bernstein. So you you have the funky R in your name. And that looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the things to really remember is a small change on each letter because letters get repeated so much through the typeface that actually even a really small change can become really yeah. quite important. Amplified, especially if yeah. it's like, a, a, like a, I don't know, an S or an E, words, letters they use a lot. Exactly, particularly the vowels. Um, and like it's different letters in each language, but also it's... Um, it's, it's just something to think about. And then when you can, you can also check how all the shapes look with each other. So we talked about using B, P, and R because they all share this kind of characteristic. Um, it's also a good idea to look at all your square letters. So an O and a Q. And if you're designing a number, sometimes you use a zero. Often people use the same shape for an O and a zero. And Which is dangerous. It's just dangerous and it's not technically correct. It's often better to have your zero a little bit different to your O. Um, but that's one of the things I didn't know. I used to just copy and paste everything. But I also yeah. found out that a lot of numbers or a lot of letters, they look kind of similar, but actually when you get down to it, they're not. Like people think that you can cut the top of the R off and make a P, but sometimes actually the actual dimensions of the P need to be a little bit different because things look different visually when you're typing. So it's always good to step back and actually start typing out words to see what things actually look like. Yeah. No, that is good. Use real wor words just like we were doing for your brand. Exactly. And also, like, my name has a lot of different kinds of shapes in it, so sometimes I use my name to test whether a font's working because I have the S, which is, tends to be a shape all of its own, and then I've also got... I love this. Yeah, I've also got all these kind of different kinds of shapes. It looks really good. I like how... So basically you have the B and the R seem unique. It's yeah. the right amount of uniqueness without being overwhelming. And I think that's what you want to do with a display font. You don't want to make every letter gimmicky, otherwise it just it just doesn't sit very well when you type it together. Mm -hmm. And you've also got to remember there are certain tricks when you're working on your fonts. So things like we talked about a little bit yesterday, your W's and your V's, often they'll sit a little bit below the baseline because otherwise they look like they're going to fall over. Um, 
And so sometimes there are these tricks, which this is where something like Prototypo can help, because if you're not quite sure of these things yet, you can have a look at how the fonts are constructed. Or even you can actually open fonts you download in programs like Glyphs, just to have a look at them and have a look at how they're built. That's sometimes really fun. Um, and also, sometimes fonts, cha letters change based on the letter next to it. Yes. So that's when you need kerning pairs. So Which is a whole other. It's like, ah, oh, this is already a lot of work. Exactly. But you'll notice this. I noticed with I should pull up some fonts that actually change based on the letters next to them. So in talking about the evolution of fonts and things like that, mm. like, do we have enough fonts? Like having, having uh, uh, fonts be aware of the word that it's in and changing accordingly is amazing. It's really, really cool. Yeah. And also, like, when you have, you have sometimes you have special characters where things join together. And so things like the V and the A is the most, is the most obvious one. So this has got default, I haven't coned this, and the spacing is really, really far apart. So when you, when you type in other letters next to it, this space looks really big. Um, an example of this in the real world is when you're in England and you look at the pedestrian crossings, there's a sign that says wait. And it looks like this, with this massive gap in between a W and the A, because somebody has not kerned it, even though Kern, you dig it's it. everywhere. Yeah. So it's always important, like I haven't done it yet, to kern your typeface. And that takes forever, and it's very confusing to do. But it's one of those things that you just have to practice, and mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. Yeah, it's one of those things you notice if you didn't do it, I Yeah, think. exactly. So. Cool. And then, yeah, once you've done your, your kind of caps and you're, you're happy with the way it's looking and your, all your kind of rounded letters, like your, your C's and your O's and your G's and your Q's, when they all kind of sit together and you feel like they're working and you've got your kind of your B's and your P's and your R's, W's, V's, once all the kind of letters are looking like they're working together, then you can try words like adhesion um, is one of those words that typographers use. You've probably seen this around just because it's a good way of seeing how all the characteristics of the font work together. Um, one of the other ones is, I can always never remember how to spell this. I think it's hamburger font sieve. So there are lots of different kind of variations of these words that you can try just to see if everything's working together. So I'm quite, I think the, the capitals are all working. So I'm just gonna do some tweaks to the numbers now to get them to look actually like the capitals. And this is harder because we didn't have any numbers on, on, the, on the sign that I'm drawing. But this is sometimes why also you just collect a bunch of these references because I'm not gonna draw the numbers like that, but it might be that I see this and I go, okay, I can kind of make a three look a bit like this B here or, I might see some of the curls here and be like, this could help me make a six. So that's why it's important to collect a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Kerwin's known as uh, Kernwin at work. <laughs> I'm sure it's always the same guy. You're like, okay, I, we get it. That was funny the first time, <laughs> but we're over it now. <laughs> wow, well, I think that's, I think there could be worse nicknames. Yeah, not a bad nickname, very designery. Yeah. Do you have any nicknames? I don't. You can give yeah, me a nickname you if you want. <laughs> well, people say Iz or Izzy. Yeah. They, they call you Izzy. They call me both. Yeah. Izzy is in the house. Do you have any nicknames? Uh, not really. I was like, yeah, I don't really have any. You don't really have any? Oh, we spot no. some of my errors here I need to fix. Yeah, so sometimes when you're, when you're drawing fonts, you'll find that you've kind of missed stuff and you may need to try and keep your paths tidy. So sometimes, like there, I'm fixing a mistake, but I've now got this extra point in the middle. Um, with glyphs, you can use tools where it simplifies the path for you. So if I've drawn this too, and I've just got some extra points because we want to have as few as possible, then I can also ask it to tidy up the paths and it will remove those two extra points that I had from drawing it. Oh, wow. No. That's an interesting picture. That's me in high school. That's you in high school. That has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. <laughs> Why are we switching to it? <laughs> you put it on your screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's for Max next week. So, hey there. Hey, hey, ladies. Which is more beautiful, my two or that picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you fit about three of me in this shirt. That's all I know. <laughs> 
so young. <laughs> PT. Sam says my nickname's PT. Paul she calls me PT. It's it. You know you have a nickname when it when it carries over from different groups of people that don't know each other. Like oh, yeah. this group called me PT, or I, they used to, <laughs> for Paul Tranny that in basketball they'd call me Train or P Train. Right. For Tranny they changed that to Train because I'm a brute when it comes to basketball. I hurt people. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I just like I don't know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing. I was gonna say. Trust me. If you're if you're hurting people, are you sure you know what you're doing? I just like I'm like I'm coming I'm coming in. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess then you you deserve. That yeah. Thing. So. But yeah, well, I think I think if you have a nickname and you it manages to get everywhere, then it's definitely a successful. It's nickname. something that's gonna stick. Or in Starbucks when they call you the wrong name all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Do they, hopefully they get Isabel right. Actually, the first time I was in America, I ordered a drink in a Starbucks and I said my name was Isabel and I must have said it so fast, so fast that they thought I said Basil. Basil. Because they were like, we've got a cappuccino for Basil. That's funny. And I was like, well, I'm the only one here, so that's gotta be mm -hmm. me. But, so yeah, sometimes they call me Baz now. Uh, Paco has a nickname. They call him Francisco sometimes, Ooh. which is kind of weird, but you know. His official name's Paco, it's for the for the record. <laughs> we have another guy named called Gus, but uh, you know, his nickname is Augustus. And he actually <laughs> has another nickname, don't you? Yeah, I know. Oh. I would kind of flip it in the two. Star Crunch <laughs> from is that from Twitch? Star Crunch. S T A H R. K R U N C H, right? All right. Ooh, Alberto, I like them. Panchito. <laughs> <laughs> like for Paco, is it Panchito? <laughs> That's fun. Paquito. <laughs> pa oh, or Paquito. Oh, I like Paquito. <laughs> I like Paquito. And I like the Gus Bot. The Gus Bot. Boop, boop, boop. The Gus Bot, because he acts like he works like there's 50 of them, but there's only one. Aww. There can be only one. That's nice and also kind of sad. Yeah, <laughs> he's he gets very lonely. <laughs> Gus bought five thousand. <laughs> Gus bought five thousand. Yeah. Does it does it does it upgrade? Does it have like like Apple where you get regular upgrades and you I can think, do more? I think it automatically like I think it's very much a self aware robot that adapts and grows like it's pretty much out of control at this point <laughs> yeah so that's what's happening well <laughs> somebody that's earlier funny. was talking about quotation marks i always try and design both both kinds when i'm making a font because then you kind of have the option whatever language you're yeah. typing in the um but yeah this is what definitely what you were talking about like the ones that are sort of left quoted and right quoted and then the ones that are like straight marks that are also straight. used for feet and inches. Yeah. And a lot of times like your font will recognize that and put in the correct one. The only time that it becomes an issue is if anybody does any programming, if mm -hmm. you're copying, because technically it's going to be the inches and feet that works uh, it, when it comes to coding. So if anybody's done any coding or programming, your code has, I bet you at one point in time, it's bro its broken because you had the wrong quotes code-wise. Yeah, that's true, actually. Or, uh, FYI. Uh, oh, I want to show something show else, it. too. Let me just try to, that's why I was clicking in here. Uh, let's go to a, I don't know, somewhere cool. Marina is Mimi. Mimi? No, because uh, couldn't pronounce Marina. That's cool. That's cool. That's kind of sad if you can't pronounce your own name when you're a kid. That's, uh, that's cute, though. Yeah, no, actually, uh, Jan Eric, yes, Terry White does have a middle name. In fact, I think it's like Terry, it starts with an L, because that, that's okay. it on Instagram. Like, he doesn't have Terry White. He, it's like Terry L. White or something like that. I, I think it's L. Could be wrong. 
Let's let's make something up until he tells us the real thing. We could just make up. Let's go with Lee. Terry Lee White. I thought his middle name was not. Ooh. That's my joke. So let me show you something really fast because I think this is pretty cool in terms of, uh, and again, everybody's probably seen something like this. But if you are in the browser and you happen to see or find a cool font, uh, I'm actually not sure this is a font, but uh, I like using this. It's called What the Font or, or What a Font. I, it's called, there's What a Font and then there's What the Font. So basically, if I click here, I can kind of determine, oh, what font is this? And we can say it's Brandon Text Wired. So it's just kind of cool if you're on a site to say, hey, what type of font is this? Boom, click, and that's how I'm finding out what all these fonts are. It's kind of yes. cool. Just a little add-on. That's really cool. Because you can yeah. also go into the code, but if if you're not that techy and it feels like too much work, this kind of extension is really, really helpful. Yeah, I think it is pretty cool. Because we talked a little bit about how you can use Adobe Capture yesterday as well, and that can also recognize you the, the closest thing to the font that you're working on that's um, included in Typekit. So, um, often that's a really fun thing to do. Uh, if you're kind of want a font that feels like something that, you know, but you're not quite sure what the font is. We're getting, we're getting down yeah. to the wire concerning I, the challenge submission oh, deadline. It's on zero zero. I think it's time. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to derail you. Well, but I think our font's ready, so I think we can uh, look at some challenges. What I think is really cool is that you did kind of, you did extra work kind of after the stream yesterday. Yeah. But it really came to life after just creating a couple characters. Yeah. So it seemed overwhelming. I got 26 characters, so many, like all this stuff. Like it, I'm, it's ready to rock. It looks really good. Yeah. It's really, like designing a phone takes a long time. But yeah, I did, I literally drew this between the time I got off the stream yesterday and this morning. And then I've been finishing it up, doing the mm -hmm. final tweaks just now. So when people say, oh, it takes a long time to design a font, it does, but you can you can get started pretty quickly if you want to make something simple. Yeah, I feel like it came together pretty quick. Yeah. And thank you for really putting the work into that. But now we are on to, you can see it right here, right over here, let's click over here, challenge uh, submissions. So we're designing a digital t ticket for Adobe Max. Nice. So they've been submitted through Woobox. You can click right there. That's basically where I'm going, but we're viewing the gallery, okay? So we'll dive into these, starting with this first one. Um, it might be similar to one that we saw earlier, maybe, maybe not. Anna Gavasa. Let's check it out, full screen in all of its glory. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. It's coming. It's loading. It's beautiful. Ooh, flames. <laughs> Welcome to Adobe Max, the third ring of hell. No, I just don't like it. The apocalypse. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Adobe Max, the beginning of the apocalypse. We have the all-seeing eye that if it's like the eye of Sauron. Yeah, it's like the tower in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> all right. Adobe Max at Creativity Conference. You know, we'll, you'll be so inspired, it'll, you'll burst into flames. Yeah, definitely eye-catching, that's for sure. You add flames, you add flames to anything, I'm like, that is awesome, <laughs> you know? I'm like, that is awesome. Good job, Anna. If you have any other comments, I'd like, I mean, flames are flames, it's super cool. Yeah. And I think uh, she submitted one earlier, so let's move on. Uh, Luis Gabriel Sa Salonia. Ooh, I like this, it's a ticket, and guess what? You're in. Get inspired, learn skills, play. Yeah, cool. It's nice yeah. use of a background image. It's kind of nice when you blur them a little bit like that because you kind of get the color and the texture through, but it doesn't take away from the type. Yeah. I really love this texture back here, like kind of mm -hmm. mimicking that. It's really cool. All right. Good job, Luis. Let's go to this next one. Eric Martins. Oh, Ooh, ticket and a ticket. <laughs> it is. It's a ticket in a ticket. It's ticket inception. Get inspired, learn skills. I like it. I really like the colors. Yeah. I think the colors are like awesome. I love this like electric, like lime green. Neon. Yeah, neon. And sticking with this style mm. um, the, the, for this year is on point, as the kids say. 
Barris. Oh, Yeti we've got Tapa. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is so small. Some, so I told them to make a meme, and somebody has made an, a meme, and they've got Harry Potter on it and Nicolas Cage. <laughs> what is Wingardium Leviosa? Wingardium Leviosa. It's the spell from Harry Potter. It's the levitating spell. Oh, really? Yeah, not a true, not a true uh, hmm. British culture fan. If you don't know that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. I appreciate it. I just know. <laughs> I just know I'm Hufflepuff, and that's it. That's all I can tell you about that. Very cool. Yeah. I'm into it. Eye catching. Julian Dofour, black and white, nice gradients. Let's actually can see right down here. Hopefully, everybody can see. A little VIP ticket bonus. I like the gradients. It could, this is the what I've been noticing, we've been watching earlier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this M could read as like a V. Yeah, that's true. You know, if you don't know. But at this point, if you already have the ticket, you already know that it's max, so I think it's okay. And I like the arrows. Yeah, it's very geometric. And this, like the way they did this. Oh, gradient. Oh, branding would just have your head on a stick. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just they would. You know, branding. Logo guidelines. Just don't run them. it by them. <laughs> just joking. Yeah, please. <laughs> just kidding. Ooh, this is clever. Colin Bowen. I don't know if Colin is with us today. I like this. Yeah. I love it. I love the whole idea because it's an invitation. Like it's your it's your ticket at this point so you're getting in which is effectively this is this is how you get into photoshop or any of the apps yeah. and also you could do this like when you start at photoshop it has different images you could give people tickets with different images on them and that's yeah. kind of a really fun unique way of doing something so good idea you've designed something with a kind of space for that and i think that's really cool i like it or do you print this up and this is like a mirror like foil so it's like your face that's that's why you're the designer, not me. <laughs> my, my ideas are dumb. Uh, Jamari Wilson. Oh, nice. A, a nice orb. That's my score. Come see all the magic at Adobe Max. Very spacious. Very spacious. It's very. You've got a little orb just out of view. Yeah, I kind of feel like this might be like it reminds me of Illustrator colors, kind of. And then you have Photoshop yeah. back there. We well, you have InDesign, you need a pink one as well. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm biased because I'm like, you need InDesign. But <laughs> is InDesign like your your favorite or your like definitely. go to? And it definitely is. I think a lot of people are kind of scared of it because it's it's one of the ones that you you kind of usually start off using Photoshop and Illustrator. I know I did. And, yeah. But I, I found InDesign has so much more control for typography and it's kind of the place where you bring everything together. So Yeah, like so what you're saying is all, all the other apps are just plugins for InDesign. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> there are a lot more than that, but uh, all the other that's funny though. I oh. find when you're working kind of on big projects, it's a really good place to like what we're doing now, where I'm housing all these kind of mood boards and colours and vector things in yeah. InDesign. It's like, hey, you know, your favorite app? That's just a plugin for, <laughs> for InDesign. That's all. That's all Photoshop. I is. just say that because I don't know any of the keyboard shortcuts. It's my way of getting out of it. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> so very cool. I think everybody, Yuri, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I just kind of clicked through all of these. Thank you, everybody, for participating. These are our top uh, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and they're all really cool. We did give away Creative Cloud earlier too. This. Uh, individuals design and let me actually find their name right down here this is the winner for the uh, challenge yesterday Oleg Oleg Karaznov made this one nice so this is the winner we get it Oleg you're good we get it stop showing off with your fancy skills just kidding actually this is your place to show off because we appreciate you as designers Albert, Alberto, and Anel, and Yuri, and Andrea, uh, yes, Leviosa, hopefully I said that right, but yeah. Oh no, they're, they're saying on, in the comments, you mean, that's Leviosa, it's more Harry Potter things. Oh, it's more, it's <laughs> this one, oh, Leviosa, oh, okay, yeah. so it's there, I like how small this is. It's a, it's I think this one's my favorite so far. I mean, today. I asked you to make a meme, and you made me a meme. <laughs> so, and you put Nicolas Cage's face on it. So, uh, all right, this is this is your favorite. This one yeah. gets your vote today. So, we will pick a winner. Um, 
actually later today at the uh, end of streams, like, uh, you know, whoever, whoever bribes us with the most money. Just kidding. Nice. Or if you make a meme, apparently. Barris, the winner will get announced tomorrow morning. So you only have tonight, uh, you know, to send Isabel lots of money. <laughs> that would be Just nice. Just kidding. Cool. So. Very cool. Yeah. Kind of wrapping that up. Looks like we have about fifteen minutes. Which is still. perfect. Because, fifteen. Yeah. Because yeah. while we were looking at all your fonts, I exported the tests we were working Ooh. on. So now we can look at it in InDesign. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If anybody doesn't know how to do it, once you once you're in and you've got your font, you can literally from Glyphs just export it, um, and then you hit next, and it'll turn it into a, an open font for you, which you can install with Fontbook or whatever kind of software you're using, and then it goes straight into InDesign. Perfect. Yeah, that was, yeah. you just, it seems like super, super simple. It's great. It's and even fun. now, like since it's in Illustrator, you can play with it all you want. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's nice when like we've been building these these mood boards over yesterday and today that we can kind of put this font in that we were working on right from the kind of sketches that we were digitizing, and then we can look at how the actual font's gonna look in our publication, which we're gonna make tomorrow. Yeah, that is cool. And I think what you could do here, because you were, you were using glyphs, mm -hmm. you could actually take this, turn this into a color font, like, and then use font self to actually make it a font. Yes. So that's, I guess, the only, uh, just another thought, so. And I think it's also important to check all your punctuation because the last thing you want to do is start setting your book tomorrow and then realize, oh, actually, I don't have enough brackets or uh, quotation marks. And then you have or... to reinstall it. Yeah. So yeah. always check that you've got your kind of basic punctuation or we've got our numbers as well. Um, and then, yeah, and then you're kind of, you're set. Well, that's all you kind of need for your, for your kind of display font is to have this uppercase set, your numbers, and then some basic punctuation, and then you're ready to go. You're ready to rock. 100 points for Griffin Puff. See, don't, everyone loves Harry Potter. Don't you chat. mean gl Gliffin Puff? <laughs> Since we're doing puns. That's oh, right, I said it. You can't make a pun of the Harry Potter houses. I just did. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're doing font Harry Potter mashups now at this point. Yeah. But I really, I like what you did. Hello, Brazil. Good to have you here. Uh, welcome, Vitor. And this is good. I think these names with uh, certain characters like Vitor. Do you have quotes in there? You do have quotes, right? Yes, I do. Okay. We have all kinds of quotes. We have the, I have all the different. Is kinds. everybody happy? Yeah. We've already hit, we've already talked about that earlier. Yeah, we've got, that's that's one of the things. It's just really important to to be careful to have all your quotes because mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm interested to see if I put any quotes in tomorrow whether people are gonna. Uh, disagree on the kinds I should be using. Can we? Can you go back into Illustrator? You're already typing that up. You're in Illustrator. Where's that page? Where? You, okay, perfect. InDesign. Yeah. Can we try? Uh, oh, perfect. InDesign. Can you type yeah. in another? See how another name works in here? Yes. Type in Emmy E M M I E, because she's our next guest. And let's see how her name looks in this fabulous new font. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Let's try Brower. If you type in Brower, because that's where we get that fun R. Oh, the fun B and the fun R. Yeah, you get all of it. Emmy Brower, she is our guest coming up next. She's getting ready. She's doing yoga stretches. Mm -hmm. She's in uh, <laughs> she's in up up dog and down downward cobra. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, with Christine Art. So this is a good day. We'll go all day till 3 p.m. Lauren Dickens coming up after that. Jumping, we're all over the map. Like you're working with, we're really starting out with, you know, typography and fonts. It's fun to get to use it right now. Definitely, and also you want to kind of start thinking about the the stuff you're going to use it with. So, I mean, for me, I I have to think about okay, if I'm going to be designing this publication tomorrow, I'm going to want body text to go with this because you don't want this really small. And so then we get into like font pairing and how we're going to design like the size of the publication to match the lettering. Um, but when you've kind of got your mood boards and you've selected your images and you've digitized some type, you're kind of like, you're really quite far there into making something that's really unique. Yeah, that is cool. Now, also with glyphs, you can make alternate fonts as well. Yes. I assume. 
because that's honestly, this is honestly, this is one thing I actually want Typekit to have. I want to be able to find the fonts that have the most alternate alternate glyphs, like display yeah. fonts. So I can add a fun Y, you know, and stuff like that. Don't you agree? And yeah, and it would be really cool as well with something like this that you could choose whether or not you want this uh, quirky R in there, or you might for some reason, if you've got different R's in the font, you might want some of them to be kind of straight and some of them to have this this little kind of swoosh because with kind of some of the sign painting and references like that, like these two G's aren't the same. They're similar, but they're not actually uh, because they're drawn by hand. And yeah. when you're doing kind of, this isn't a script font, but when you're doing a script font, you want to have those kind of alternate glyphs so that it doesn't feel like a typeface. It feels a little okay. bit more fun than that. Yeah, and that's kind of, that's that's kind of what I what I like. Mm. Just make it a little, a little unique. And you are right. I think with script fonts, maybe mainly script fonts would have that sort of thing. I think also when you're picking your display font, it's important to have a body text that contrasts, which we'll get into a little bit tomorrow. But when we looked at a lot of the references, there was like there were a lot of kind of sign painted references, and then there were some more classical ones and some more modern ones, like some of these kind of older, sort of more classic signs. So I think mm -hmm. if I'm designing something with body copy, I want to have a font that's a serif in order to kind of offset this quite kind of like geometric font. Yeah, you would have a, a serif base. Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, I think you're right. That's good. I think we talk all um, all about that. Like font pairings is kind of like next level too. Yeah, so. and that's the really important thing when you're designing your typeface is to think about what its use is mm -hmm. and then what other fonts you're going to use with it and whether how that's going to work. Yeah, you do win. Hamza did. <laughs> he got. <laughs> 10, 10 billion points for uh, Glyphenclaw. That's like a new, we could all be from Glyphenclaw. <laughs> I know? love this. You guys are messing with type and the fact I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But believe me, Harry Potter comes up a lot here. Do you Have you ever taken the test to figure out, like, do you know what house you belong to? Um, I've taken it a couple of times. Most of the time I get Ravenclaw, so I'll take that. Ooh, but I'm Ravenclaw. I don't know. Mm. I mean I do I have I did read Harry Potter, but I don't know enough about it to What are you? I'm like straight up Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. I'm this. Yeah, I'm I'm like I'm Huff, well, I'm, I'm Hufflepuff. For sure. Oh man, look at you two yeah. both wearing black. 100%. Oh, you're Slytherin and you're Ravenclaw though? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Slytherin is very much like this. Voldemort. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Would you like a spot of tea, Harry? That's what <laughs> Michael says. Really? Yeah, it's just a comment in here. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, oh, that is good stuff. Oh yeah, eloquent. That's what we like. Just, you know, I didn't wake up this morning and think we were going to be discussing my Harry Potter house, but <laughs> that's fine. Oh, yeah. No matter how much you try, like, you always you always end up back at Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? Typography and Harry Potter. And uh, uh, thanks to whoever added that to an in, uh, their ticket was a Harry Potter spell that the levitate spell. I don't remember that one. Wingardium Leviosa. Okay, I'm um, Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> I shouldn't know. I'm um, Guardian Leviosa. Is that your levitating? I was levitating. <laughs> so you're gonna have to go and brush up your knowledge on all the Harry Potter movies now. Oh gosh, I don't know. Do and time? I've been, I've been, I've been to Universal Studios. Went to the oh, really? Universal Studios like Harry Potter World. I've dressed up, I've done it all. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, ooh, Perry Hotter is a tight face, and it's real. Ooh, that would be just fun to check out. You're a typographer, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> You're a typographer, <laughs> Harry, and <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> I wanna see, I'm gonna look this tight face up. What's it called? Uh, my, This one is called Harry Hotter. Oh, oh, okay. Barry Hotter. Oh, yeah. There we go. 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that's very good. I love the Thunderbolts. Here's an, that's very cool. Um, here's another resource that I like. You might like this one too, by the way. Um, it's called, uh, let's do Harry Potter. I can't even type. So I've shown this before, but I think it's really cool. So basically it's called Wordmark It, wordmark.it. And all you do is you type in whatever you want, right? Hit enter. And these are all the fonts that I have on my desktop. Oh, cool. So it gives me everything, type kits, just every, every single system font that I can go through and kind of, just kind of see what I have essentially is uh, what I'm doing here. So now you know. Sometimes that's helpful as well when you you don't have time to troll through all the fonts, but you want to try to try out everything and just mm -hmm. just when you're not really sure. I think that the type kit filters are really good for that when you have a particular thing in mind mm -hmm. because you can preview all the. Yeah, and trust me, it's it's only getting better. Like, let's talk in a week. Yeah, in Illustrator, it's going to be like fantastic what you can do yeah. with fonts. This is going to be super cool. I think we have a real font. So if I can make this overnight between the two live streams, you guys can definitely make a font, so. Yeah, um, and maybe if people are interested, you could always like post that font. Yes, I'll try somewhere. and, when it's finished, I'll try and put it on my Behance. I'm um, interested in the, so this is for a zine. What's like, what's, what's the name of the zine? What's gonna, I'm thinking of the masthead. Like yeah. what's gonna be the text there instead of Ron? <laughs> instead of Ron. <laughs> right now we have Ron. It gets, we get stick with Ron. I mean, Ron's I mean, not a very Italian name. It needs to at least be Francesco. Yeah. It's been Italian. Francesco. I think that's on the olive oil sign. I think it says Francesco. There we go. Could we think of something? Can you type, maybe do we type something else in there? Like, do we think of the name, a name of the zine just like for tomorrow? I'm just thinking of ideas. Like yeah. a use case for this now, like next steps. What is this called? It's an Italian uh, zine. It's all about type in Italy, mm -hmm. essentially. So. And we're not gonna call it just my type or a type pun. Yeah. <laughs> I think it should still be a pun, but you gotta throw some Italian in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Does anyone speak Italian? Does anyone wanna help? That would be uh be great. Italia Ciao Bella. Ex. No. What's Ciao the word? Bella. Prego. Um, Prego is the word that Italians use and I don't understand what it means because they seem to use it in every single context. If anybody prego. is Italian and can explain to me what prego means, that would prego. be great. Yeah, we have no idea. Yes, prego. Welcome. It's your welcome. But I've also seen it used when I enter a restaurant and they go, ah, prego when they want you to order. So Huh. Oh, we're getting names in. Typeroni. <laughs> <laughs> Typeroni. Let's see what Typeroni looks Help like. Help us all. <laughs> that's exactly, that sounds like what a, an American would come up with. That, that is a very typeroni. American Italian <laughs> Typeroni. <laughs> like, it's not really real. This is like Olive Garden Italian is what we have here, <laughs> right? Oh, I typeroni. <laughs> I can use it to brand like an Italian restaurant in Brooklyn now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this belongs in the suburbs. Hey, can we go eat at Typeroni? Um, <laughs> but we are getting hungry now. Ciao. We got some good ones. Thank you. We're thinking of Le, Le Font, La Typografia. Fun. Cool. That's cool. What would a chow look like? It's simple. The Paco. <laughs> the Paco. <laughs> it doesn't feel very Italian. The Paco. Yeah, I'm not quite. We're trying. But I think like Francisco is sounds, or yeah. even if you did Francesco or Foncesco. Foncesco. I like one of the ones which have these R's in it because it allows us to use that really funky thing. I mean, maybe I'm going to do a collection of these. I'm going to do ones in New York and ones in London. So maybe I just call it a name of uh, a traditional name from the place. That could be cool. This is my zine. My zine is called Francesco. Yeah. <laughs> That's his name. And now, and we're open to more ideas as, as you send them our way. We're kind of down to the last minute. Uh, super cool again. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions yeah. about any of the tools and the processes, I'm going to be here tomorrow making the actual publication, but you can still ask me all the type questions or just message me on Behance. Yeah, go like click about tab, Behance, boom, send, send you a message. Check out your work on like Instagram. What's your yes. Instagram handle real uh, fast? I-S-L-E-9-5. 
ISLE 95 yes. because that's the year she graduated from college. <laughs> Definitely not the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ah, uh, Isabel Lee, thank you so much. You've been fantastic. I'm so glad we get you tomorrow as well. Uh, super cool. And we have a fun day. Yeah, we have Amy Brower up next with Queen Christine Arth. So stick around, Michael and Heidi and uh, Anel and everyone. We have more design, uh, fun, good times coming your way. So hang out, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow for sure. Bye.